What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out sad update on Big E, a new member to the Judgment Day potentially. WWE star not cleared, another WWE star out, and other wrestling related news, man. Should be a very interesting one, man. Appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel so far. We're gonna get right into this one. Let's see what's going on with Big E, man. Hopefully, things are on the up and up but doesn't sound like it's too good so let's see what's going on with him on guys it is wrestlemia here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors <clears> you <throat> need to know including Rhea ripley not cleared oh. unfortunately another sad update for biggie a wwe superstar shelled for 2024 dominic mysterio invites a new judgment day member did cody rhodes cross the line has logan paul caused a big problem in wwe is a wrestling legend retiring damn that's school. a lot of wrestling Show news damn hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on facebook a lot going on right now this also check out our new videos on wrestlemania xl now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story our first story looks at rhea ripley not cleared on top of today's news is report that the judgment days rhea ripley won't be able to compete until SummerSlam. A new story from PW Insiders. I mean, we kind of expected that one, so. They said the Eradicator hasn't been cleared for physicality, but is expected to be in time to battle Liv Morgan at SummerSlam. Aria returned on this week's Raw, but has limited herself to just promos. Do you think she will be ready to wrestle by SummerSlam? Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, I think they kind of have a timetable. That's why they, you know, Aria came out there on Monday night and said, hey, Let's have a match for the Women's uh, World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam. So I think the timetable is most likely SummerSlam. They're obviously going to play it safe. And she shouldn't be really doing anything physical with Liv. You know, Liv is the, the scared heel. So she shouldn't be doing anything physically with her until we get to the match. Because you want to build up that anticipation for when she finally gets her hands on Liv. So I think we kind of all expected that one. But uh, hopefully, you know, everything's on track. When it comes to her returning into the ring at SummerSlam. Next up, a sad update for Biggie. Oh, it's hard to believe, but it's just been over two years since WWE Superstar Biggie suffered a How catastrophic time is injury after he was dropped right on his head, injuring his neck. Now, Biggie not only survived an accident that could have ended his life, but he emerged without being paralyzed. Yeah. Something that is nothing short of a miracle. However, Facts. the WWE Universe is still anxious to know whether the New Day Strongman will ever wrestle again. During an appearance on Chris Vanini's Getting Over podcast, Biggie revealed, Now we're at two years and running since I broke my neck. I broke my C1 in two places, my C6 as well. I feel great. I have no issues with pain, no issues with discomfort, weakness, or any of those things. My okay. strength is great. The only issue is my C1 is healing fibrously, which is great for normal day-to-day -day life, but it's not turning into new bone or ossifying yet. They're not uh... going to clear me until that happens. It's obviously a very important bone. Right now, that is the waiting game. I did go to Cancun about a month ago for stem cells. We'll see if that changes anything. Right now, I feel great. I'm just not in a position to be cleared oh, quite yet. Whether he ever returns to the ring remains to be seen. Nonetheless, he remains one of WWE's most beloved figures, and the WWE has capitalized on his popularity by using him in non-wrestling capacities, such as co-hosting WWE's pre-shows for its PLEs. Next up, a WWE... Damn, man. That, that definitely does suck, but the, the good thing about this is he's able to move and have a normal day-to-day -day life and with no pain. That's what you care about. That's what I care about the most. I know there's some people that want to see him back in the wrestling ring, and I'm one of them, but it's more so about his well-being, him being able to have a comfortable, normal life outside of wrestling. Um, obviously, that one particular bone, I think they said to see one or whatnot it's having a tough time healing so you know hopefully he, it's able to heal on its own and there's no rush to be honest with you because anything dealing with the neck you got to take it very seriously very cautiously a lot of the moves they do can end up landing you know a person can end up landing on their neck and it could cause some severe injuries so um praying for Big E still on you know just him recovering at his pace and you know um, i'm glad that he's able to still do the things he loved to do in his day-to-day -day life without really being in pain that's the most important thing we superstar shelf for 2024 
That's bad news for fans of Tyler Bate. Oh, it's damn. The Republic team with Pete Dunne. As Fightful Select is reporting that Bate is not expected to return this year. Oh, According shit. News, Tyler Bate recently revealed that he tore his left pectoral major oh. and tendon off the bone dream oh, match alongside no. his partner Pete Dunne at NXT. Bate provided an update following an injury sustained during the July 2nd episode of NXT. Damn. He shared that he successfully undergone surgery to repair oh, yeah, the injury. That's it. Bates' absence explains why the WWE decided to put Dunn into a program against yeah. former brawling now it makes teammate sense. Sheamus. Hopefully, this program will give Dunn a chance to rise in the singles ranks while Bate recovers. And we're sending our best to Tyler Bate for a fast and full recovery. Yeah, Thanks. hopefully that can... You know, I, I think that's where they're going with. I think Sheamus won't have a problem for putting over uh, Pete Dunne here. I think Sheamus has been really, if you want to be honest, he's been doing a good job of putting over some of the 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 newer talent on the roster, giving them some good matches and and really, you know, getting people behind them in the sense of taking them seriously. Pete Dunne definitely needs that. And, you know, I didn't even know his uh, uh tag team partner, Tyler Bate, was legitimately hurt like that so yeah it makes sense he's gonna be out for the rest of the year but it seems like they're doing something with Pete Dunne and I'm very interested to see how that plays out next up Dominic Mysterio invites a new Judgment Day member could a recently signed superstar become the latest member of the Judgment Day Dominic Mysterio recently discussed the possibility of newcomer mm. Stephanie Baker joining the group during an interview with the website ESTO it is something very excellent for us to have another Latina in WWE, especially having her as something that is going to catch the women's division on fire. Mm. Okay, joining the Judgment Day would be huge, especially if the WWE has a jump from NXT to Raw without spending too much time on the black and gold brand. Dominic Mysterio discussed what she would bring to the table. She's going to bring something different to the side of the US. I'm excited to see her. If she wants, she can have something with the Judgment Day. There are two Irish, two Puerto Ricans, and we hire someone else who comes from Mexico. Maria Ripley is likely to leave the group soon, mm -hmm. which will create a vacancy. That is unless Liv Morgan joins in officially. Would you guys like to see Stephanie Vakur in the Judgment Day? Do you think she would make a good addition? Let us know in the comments down below. It's not a bad idea, but I, I think the story right now is obviously what they're doing with Liv and... You know, I don't think this is just going to be a one and done match with Rhea and Liv at SummerSlam. I think this is going to really culminate even more. Hell, I do think at some point Damian Priest is on his way out of Judgment Day too. So uh, it's not a bad idea, but I, I think they're going with the route of her going through NXT, that system, and kind of getting fans introduced to her through NXT and then casually, you know, over time, bring her up to the main roster. So, but we'll see. I mean, it's not... I mean, with her aesthetics, it would kind of fit. So it's not a bad idea, but we will see how it plays out. Next up, Cody Rhodes shoots on the Young Bucks. That was interesting. I think I did see about, one well, of the hear about books. this on, Cody spoke with Chris Bam not hear about it, but I think I did see this on Twitter, like what he had initially said about the Young Bucks. Yeah, about how information in the book could lead to misunderstandings about his important role and how All Elite Wrestling came into being. According to Cody, I hated that in the Young Bucks book, they said I was the last to the signing, because that's a big thing. Some of the AEW defenders who don't realize that they're turning people off to their product more than they're turning people on. Mm. The current WWE Undisputed Champion explained that while he was the last to sign, he played a vital role behind the scenes during the Elite's discussion about the merits of AEW. That's one of the things that people always cite. Oh, he was last. He wasn't that big a deal to the origin. No, wow. the guy who's here off camera was the first person to ever meet Tony, and he met him in a vetting process for all of us. Rhodes, who left AEW in 2022 to sign with the WWE, has never revealed the specifics behind his decision to leave the company. Naturally, this has led to speculation about whether there was any friction between him and his fellow executive vice presidents and or Tony Khan. While Cody has said he never plans to talk about it, his comments about how the Young Bucks framed his role in AEW will likely renew the conversation about the reasons why Rhodes left. Rhodes summed up his own take on things. So yeah, I guess I was a last and yes, I had different thoughts and it's not incorrect at all what they said. Yeah, it's not incorrect, but I was just in on it as well as anybody else. Uh, what do you guys think of Cody's comments and how they relate to his involvement in AEW's origins? Do you think the Bucks book could have caused confusion about Rhodes' role? Or is the American Nightmare reading too much into things? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up It depends, because when you sit up there and say, oh yeah, he was the last one to sign. And it depends on the context of how it was said in the book. But someone could read into that like, Oh, he was the last one to sign, you know, like Cody said, oh, it, you know, he wasn't really a big deal. Cody was the last one to sign. Like, it's different when you say, oh, I was the first to sign. 
you know, I was the first to sign to, you know, get things going. And Cody was the last to sign. Like, you know, he was kind of, you could say maybe he was hesitant, wasn't sure. But it seems as if Cody's putting it out there like, yeah, I may have been the last to sign. But I definitely was an important part of how things went down and how things became to be. And I think that's where he more or less is probably trying to put out there not to... Not for it to be like, a, oh, yeah, Cody was the last son and that was it. That's all his in real involvement was involved in the creation of AEW. You know, I, I think he, you know, wanted to put his name out there. Like, no, I may have been the last to sign with the company, but the talks, the conversations, I was one of the first people to have that conversation and get the ball rolling. So, uh, you know, he has every right to defend himself in that manner. I don't think it's that big of a deal per se, just trying to clarify some things. But, you know, the internet's going to turn this into something that it shouldn't be. Cody Rhodes crossed the line? Cody Rhodes' recent storyline with Roman Reigns and The Rock is still being praised, including some well promos between the three. However, Cody claims he's unsure whether he crossed the line during one segment where he mocked The Rock. Cody told Chris Van Vliet, I feel maybe I crossed the line. I did a promo where I said he had LTS. I feel like a lot of people liked the interview and got a nice round of applause when I came back through the curtain, but it felt so off-brand for me because we have so many young kids that I Aww. felt like this one guy is the guy that I'm going to go to these lengths for, and maybe that's what made this all click. Cody's LDS comments fit in well with the insults thrown by The Rock, but still Cody commented, this genuine animosity and smile at each other, but probably deeply dislike one another. If he's the one who's going to bring it out, it's probably good TV, but I did feel a little, I guess, icky in the what? moment. Next up, as low. God damn it! Cody! I get it. I get it. They, they're marketing you as pretty much the new John Cena of this era. Cool, that's awesome. But you know what? John sometimes would have to go to those lengths. To get the job done. Hell. We all remember what John did. Damn near fucking burying the rock on live television. With the whole. I have to write the writ. I have to write my promos on my wrist now. Because I don't remember them. That wasn't scripted. And the rock was pissed. So I think he would be okay. If you hit him with the little dick syndrome. Like jab. Like that. That wasn't even nothing too crazy. He I mean, ain't crossed no line. This is the same guy that's over here cursing you out, calling out your mom. He had a whole concert cooking you. Like, what? What? If anything, I think you went a little bit too light on the rock. Like I said, John Cena, the poster boy for kids everywhere in WWE. Sat up there and buried the rock on live television with an unplanned uh, back and forth on what he said about the rock writing promos on his wrist. And fans didn't even realize it at that time until after the fact. And it's like, yo, this nigga just cooked him. And the rock was pissed. So I think he would be okay with what you just said. Well, God damn it, Cody. God damn it. Logan Paul caused a big problem. Was the WWE taping next week's SmackDown due to Logan Paul's problem with Japan? You may recall Paul would be unavailable for the WWE's upcoming tour of Japan due oh. to quote unquote previous commitments. However, it was noted that Paul is still un Ain't no goddamn previous commitments. If you know anything about Logan Paul in Japan, that's all. If you know, you know. <laughs> Unpopular in Japan due to a controversial YouTube video he made there. As mentioned, Paul is not banned from the country, but he's apparently not the country's favorite right now. Yeah. However, is the WWE taping SmackDown because it doesn't want to use Paul in Japan? That's a big possibility, but even if the WWE were to run a SmackDown in Japan, it would have been taped as Japan is 14 hours ahead of the uh -huh. US in Eastern time. Consequently, an 8 p.m. SmackDown would have to air in the AM. Yeah. The controversy surrounding Paul could explain why SmackDown is being taped, but there could be other reasons. Next up, what show is replacing SmackDown on Fox? The SmackDown is leaving Fox soon to move to the USA mm. Network, but what show is Fox replacing the blue brand with? A Fox is dropping a highly rated show, which raises the question, what will be a suitable replacement? A Ringside News reported, Fox has unveiled its full 2024 schedule, revealing the replacement for WWE SmackDown on Friday night. Starting this season, the Friday 8pm Eastern Time, 5pm Pacific Time slot will be occupied by Fox College Football Friday, Fox College Hoops, and Fox UFL. 
while SmackDown's ratings have... Oh, that's easy, bro. That's, they're going to make easy money there. ...have increased to the point where it's often been the top show on cable and broadcast TV. It doesn't garner the advertising dollars similarly rated shows achieve due to some advertisers' low opinion of wrestling. Mm. It'll be interesting to see how the sports lineup fares as well as whether the programming diminishes SmackDown's ratings on USA Network. And finally, is a wrestling legend retiring? And last but not least, is Dustin Rhodes mm. retiring from wrestling? There was confusion among fans whether the 55-year-old wrestler plans on retiring when his AEW deal expires this September. But Rhodes updated fans on X, wrong, geez guys, do better. Yes, my contract is up in September and no, I am absolutely not done. Having the best matches of my life and hopefully, God willing, I will get to retire on my own terms, respected with a full heart. Hopefully negotiations go well because I'm damn worth the world. The artist formerly known as Goldust explained his priorities. The only things that matter to me, taking care of my family first and foremost, and finishing up when I'm ready, and how I envision my retirement. So hold off guys, this biz is my life, and I love doing it for you while still having fun and able. Thank you all for your continued love and support. As some fans believe Dustin was mm. hanging up his boots when he discussed wanting to leave the grappling game while he could still walk. However, Rhodes apparently feels he's still in good shape and there's no telling what's next. And one thing is clear, Dustin's work in AEW has been outstanding and he hasn't lost a step yet. But there you have it, folks. Hmm. The wildest news story. Very, very interesting. The question is, will he stay in AEW or will he go back to WWE? The story is there if he does go back. And it would be a nice addition um, to help out Cody, you know, with what he's going to be dealing with. When the rock comes back and you know the whole bloodline stuff you know that's still gonna be going on potentially so i don't know what y'all think do you think he should stay in aew finish his career in aew or do you think he should go back to wwe it's a different landscape now and i do think they would probably treat him a whole lot better in wwe than they ever did in the past and i think it would be something different Especially if he's just not doesn't come back as gold dust. No, 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 no. All that's done. Just dusting. Have the Rose Brothers once again on WWE television in a more serious role like they've done with Cody. I think I would like that. I think that would be cool. But if he stays in AEW, that's also fine as well. Comment down below. Let me know, man. What are some other videos y'all want me to check out? Appreciate all love and support y'all have shown on the channel. Row 2. 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.